Hi guys, welcome back to Grania's Home and Kitchen. Guys, thank you so much for coming back and for those of you that have been following me for a while will know I had to take some time off. Guys, I know what it's like when someone tells you that they're sick but they won't tell you what's wrong with them and it's very frustrating and I want to try and explain without going into too much detail the reason I had to take some time off. So two and a half years ago, I experienced a very traumatic event. So much so that it actually brought me to my knees. I mean, I was so unwell with it. I have been working very hard to get better. And, you know, I was on the, on the road to recovery. But unfortunately, there are triggers that in my life that triggered the traumatic event again. And um, so because of that, I kind of had a relapse. Now I am working hard to get back to myself and um, I still have a ways to go guys. But the reason I decided to come back to my YouTube channel is because it brings me so much joy. Like I always looked forward to doing my videos and you know, I'm not a big YouTuber, you know, I'm not making millions. I do this because I enjoy doing it and I enjoy telling you guys stories about my mother and my grandmother and I enjoy sharing recipes with you. So that's why I decided that I would come back now because I have been getting lots of messages from lovely messages from people the past few weeks and I see there's a huge take up on my Christmas pudding which I am going to be making. That's why there's all this bread in the background. So I'm going to be making my Christmas puddings as well. I'll be making I think seven this year. It's crazy. But um, I'm not asking anybody for sympathy. I have an amazing support system here with my family and it's something that I have to deal with and you know, there's a lot of underlying, um, how would I say, underlying reasons why I can't discuss what happened to me. So thank you so much for, for your support and for those of you that sent me kind words. And let's get on with our recipe today. So guys, today I'm going to make what's called gur cake. Now this is a traditional Dublin cake and basically it's made up with stale bread, stale scones, stale cake, anything, any baked goods that you have left in the house that are stale. Traditionally it was made by bakers so they were able to use up all the leftovers the next day and it was very cheap. So I've heard, and I'm not sure how true this is, that it's called gur cake because in Ireland, right, so if we have, I guess, thugs, I don't know if they're thugs, but uh, a word we use in Ireland specifically I think particularly probably in Dublin is somebody is a gurrier. Okay, so the the what I have heard the tradition of this is that because it was so cheap, they it was the only cake that they could afford, so they would come and buy this cake from the bakers. So basically, it's like it was like a poor man's cake, but actually it is delicious, and my husband Kieran absolutely loves it, and he's always saying to me, "Will you make gur cake?" So I decided if I'm coming back, I'll come back and make something that he will enjoy. So first off guys, we have to make a pastry. Now I use a shortbread pastry over a short crust pastry. What's the difference you might ask? Well, a short bread pastry, first of all, is beaten, whereas a short crust pastry, pastry, a short crust pastry, you fold in the butter. You've seen me make short crust pastry before, I'm sure. Um, and this is much sweeter than a short bread, no sorry, short bread pastry is much sweeter than a short crust pastry, although I do make a short, a sweet short crust based pastry. I can't talk today guys, I've been away for too long. <laughs> so short, I make a sweet short crust pastry as well. You're going to be shocked when you see how wet this is, you're going to be like that is not going to work. But this it, that is actually how it turns out initially and you have to refrigerate it for quite a while so that it's much more malleable and I can roll it out and whatever. So anyway, let's begin by making the pastry and then I'm also going to show you the ingredients in the gur cake because I'm going to let them steep. I do have some things to do so I'm going to go off and do them after I've made this and then when I come back later I will put the whole thing together. So, okay, so guys, here I have, I'm going to put the ingredients in the description below guys for you and I will convert them to ounces for those who don't like to follow pounds, or sorry, cups. Okay, so this is what we call a cup of butter, but it's actually a half pound of butter. 
and it is soft guys so I didn't have this out of the fridge in time so I put it in the microwave at power level four because you don't want it to go watery so I put it in the microwave for power level four first of all I think for about 40 seconds and then I had to put it in again for a further 20 so it makes it nice and soft that's really important because you're going to be beating the butter in okay so let me bring over my bowl here and I'm going to put my half pound or my cup of softened butter into the bowl. To this we're going to add one egg. Okay, now I'm using my big mixer. You can use a hand mixer for this, or you can do it by hand, but I'm just using my big mixer today for it. So I'm breaking in my egg. So here we have an egg and a half pound of butter. And I'm actually going to use my, my whisk. Uh, you can use your paddle as well if you want to. Because the butter has been softened, I'm going to use my whisk. So let me see, can I bring it over here so you can see it a bit better. Because, so I'm going to put on my beater. Now I'm not going to beat it too fast because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to over whip it either. So I'm just going to turn on my, my beater. And I'm going to mix the butter and egg. Okay guys, to this I am adding three quarters of a cup of sifted icing sugar. So I'm just going to add a little bit in. You want to do this slowly because you don't want to create a big powder puff. So once you add the sugar, it will start bringing the butter and the egg together a bit more. Now guys, if you like, you can add some vanilla to this. Um, I'm not going to add vanilla today, but you can, if you like, add vanilla to this. I'm just gonna whisk it up a little bit. I don't know if you can see, it's coming up together a bit better now that it has the sugar in there. Now we're going to add two cups of flour. We're gonna use either a plain flour or an all-purpose flour, so we're not going to use a raising agent. And we're going to slowly add the flour. And we're going to just bring it all together. And that's it. We don't want to overbeat it, guys. Uh, anything that's not combined, I will just do with a spatula. Okay. And now, so now I'm going to flour my board. And I'm going to use my spatula. Oh, you can see how soft this is. I'm just going to, to bring it together. And I'm going to put it out on my floured surface. Now there is a little bit that needs to be combined there. So I'll just use my hands. Obviously wash your hands, guys. So I'm just going, you can see how soft it is? Very, very soft, way softer than a short crust pastry. Okay, so that's really odd. No kneading at all with this. So now I'm going to cut it in half because with Gur cake, you have some pastry on the bottom and you have some pastry on the top. Guys, sorry, I have to voice over this part because there was too much noise going on in the background. So you'll see here I laid out a really long piece of cling film or saran wrap and I'm flouring it. So then I'm going to take one of the pieces of the dough and I'm going to put it on top. And you can see I'm just kind of basically given it a, sh a square shape. doesn't look very square, but that's what I was aiming for. Now I'm putting another bit of flour on top and I'm going to take another long piece of cling film or saran wrap and I'm going to lay that over the top. You're going to see why I'm doing this in a moment. I personally think this is ingenious and I came up with this myself. <laughs> Pat myself on the back there, why don't you girl? Anyway, I'm laying the other piece of cling film over the top 
and now I'm going to take my rolling pin and I'm going to roll out the rolling pin so that it is the same size as the base roll out the rolling pin I'm going to roll out the dough so it's the same size as the base of the pan so I'm going to I'm, I'm aiming for a square shape now you know it's debatable but once I can fit the base of the pan on the bottom that's really what I'm looking for so you can see how soft this is so this would be impossible to roll out without the cling film on top and also um, it when it's put in the fridge it goes very hard so okay, it's just you know it's just a nightmare so I am just rolling it out now to get as square a shape as possible Okay. Okay, so now I am just going to slide it onto a plate. And there is number one. Okay. Okay, so now they're both going in the fridge. Nice. So it's now the next day. I'm a bit croaky because I didn't sleep last night at all. I was up till 4.30. So I, um, I'm a little croaky and not a bit tired. So um, please forgive the croaky voice. I'm also in my pajamas. So let's go back to preparing the filling. Okay, so in here I have three slices of bread. It's actually, it's not really that stale. It's not stale enough, but it'll be fine. I have three slices of brioche and I have three slices of, this is actually whole wheat, uh, raisin, cinnamon and raisin bread. So I'm going to put them, actually I'm gonna break them up. Now you can take off the crusts if you want, but I'm not going to. Um, and just break that up. I should mention, I actually have been trying to make this for like two weeks. I bought ingredients for it last week. I ended up having to throw some of them out. Um, and uh, sometimes it just takes me a little bit longer to get myself organized. Um, I guess one of my biggest problems is sleep. It always has been whenever I trying to deal with issues I don't sleep so okay so I'm breaking up so that was about nine slices of bread I'm gonna add one and a half cups of raisins we're also going to add some uh, nutmeg all spice which is important mixed spice at home and actually I have ginger in here I'm gonna add a little bit of ginger as well this is just um, dried ginger, ginger spice. And I'm also going to add, guys, um, keeping with the ginger theme, I'm going to add, I have one of these muffins left over. They're ginger, gingerbread muffins. They're so good. And I'm going to add one of them, but I'm not going to steep the, um, the muffin because it won't need to be steeped because it's still very soft. Okay, what have I got here? So nutmeg. I don't even, I have a half a tablespoon here. I'm just um, going to, guys, you know me. I would for sure put um, a good two teaspoons of allspice. Definitely put two teaspoons of that. And the rest you can just put a sprinkling in according to your taste. You don't have to, you know, you can just use the allspice if that's all you want to do. So there's 7.5 mils, there's 2.5 mils and a teaspoon. So I don't quite want to fill this up. I want to, um, that should be enough for allspice. And I'm just going to put a little shake of ginger in. Just to give it a little, give it a little kick. Okay, now guys, you all, 
they always say to steep it in um, strong tea. I'm actually going to use Earl Grey. So I'm going to put two tea bags in here and I'm going to make probably a little over a cup. We want, what we want to do is we want to cover the bread and the raisins and let them soak. Okay. So again guys, I'm like going to do a guessing game. I'm also going to put the juice of an orange and a lemon in here just because I bought them for my Christmas pudding and I have a big pack of them. So I might as well use them up. There's my cutting board. My cutting board must be in the dishwasher so I'm just going to be careful I don't cut my countertop. And guys, through your fingers so you don't get any pips. Make sure your hands are washed of course. And these are beautiful. They're so juicy guys. Oh my goodness. Okay. See I've caught the pips. This is actually quite appropriate for this time of the year isn't it? It's kind of Christmassy or you know it kind of has hints of Christmas pudding doesn't it? This lemon is not agreeing with me. Look, it, it just, I can't squeeze it. So I'm just going to use my little, oh, why are they? Just be careful, I've got to be careful of my pips. I don't want to kill anybody. Okay, I'm just going to pick the pips out, guys. I can see them on the top there. Okay, I'm just going to put half a lemon in, guys. It's too much work. <laughs> So I am going to let my tea steep and get nice and dark. Guys, so my tea is nice and strong. I love the smell of Earl Grey. And now I'm going to, oh actually, I'm going to add something else. You, this is optional guys, but I'm just going to put a little drop of Captain Morgan's in. This is optional. Just a small bit, you don't need a lot. I need a little bit more. It'll bake off, right? The alcohol will bake off, so you'll just be left with the flavour. And in goes our tea. Now I'm going to leave this for an hour, and that'll give the pastry time to set, and it'll give the bread time to soak up all those lovely flavours. Let's give it a stir. And I will be back to you in an hour. Kieran's well insured. Okay, let that suck. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, guys, now I have my pastry out. And I'll just put a little bit of flour actually on the table. And I'm going to get my pan. I'm going to grease my pan and I'm going to flour it. So I'm just going to do it the good old fashioned way with a little bit of foil from the butter and some butter, which needs a bit more flour, pass it all around. This just helps it come out of the pan. You could line it if you wanted to, but this is actually, this works fine. Now let's take the first piece. I'm going to just take off this and I'm going to wipe the bottom of my pan to make sure there's nothing on it. I'm going to put it down on our pastry and I'm going to cut around it. So see how much better that is than having to try and roll it. Okay, that's easier. All right, so we have our pastry. We're just going to pop it into the bottom of the pan. That's a great little cheat, isn't it? Again, oh, clever if I took the cling film off. on top. Okay, again, let's 
touch around with your knife. Oh no, that was actually okay, but it's fine. I will again you flip it. Okay guys, now we're going to make our filling. So here is the bread, it's been soaking for about an hour and a half, and I'm just gonna put it through a sieve. We're just gonna get rid of the excess liquid. So I'm just gonna sit it there for a few minutes, and just let it seep out. Now, we are going to take our mixing bowl, and to this, we are going to add a quarter pound or a half a cup of butter. Guys, what am I doing with chocolate chips? <laughs> okay, when I watched Manning's, they actually put chocolate brownie into theirs, and I thought, oh, I don't have any chocolate brownie or any chocolate cake, but I love my chocolate, so I'm gonna melt a bit of chocolate and put it in. You don't have to do this, guys. You can put whatever you want in gar cake. It's like the best thing in the world doesn't matter what you, what you want to put in. If you just want to put plain bread in, you can do that as well. But I thought, I love my chocolate. So I'm going to add probably about a, um, maybe a half a cup of melted chocolate to it. Optional, 100% optional, guys. So guys, to this, we're going to we'll just add two and a half tablespoons of flour. We're not putting much flour in it. So just two and a half tablespoons. And to this, we're going to add a half a teaspoon of baking powder. When we were in school, this is the way our teacher taught us. If anybody is watching me that did home economics in Ireland, they would tell us to put it on the spoon and then take your knife and for a half a teaspoon do that. And obviously for a quarter, you'd do that. That was guess before they had uh, little measuring spoons. Okay, so this is actually three quarters of a cup, and I'm actually going to put three quarters of a cup in. Don't think it matters. Maybe a little bit less of nice brown sugar. One egg. Oh, there's my oven heating, guys. So I heated my oven to 180 degrees, and after about maybe 15 minutes, you can turn it down to 170. And I'm going to melt a bit of chocolate. So I'm going, now I'm going to add the muffin. I'll bring you over to the bowl in a second. I'm just going to add in the muffin. And let's go get the chocolate. For the chocoholics, let's just add the, no, the bit of chocolate. Hopefully we'll get little uh, bursts of chocolate <laughs> for the ones that didn't melt. And we're going to take our paddle this time, guys. So we're going to need a little bit more strength because this is heavier. On goes our paddle. Got to make sure I buy everything in there. I have the flour, the bacon powder, the sugar, the butter, the egg, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of whipping cream, uh, about two tablespoons of whipping cream. So now you're going to give that a good mix, guys. You want it to be nice and blended. milk or cream or you don't have to add anything so actually I should show you shouldn't I so about two tablespoons guys okay two tablespoons oh! and don't do that you can see it's very wet guys that's actually fine that's the way it's supposed to be so let's just give it a good old whisk. So you can see there, it's very well combined. I'm going to take my spatula and scrape this off. So you can see guys, there's no, like this is something you make totally make of your own. There's no set recipe for girl cake. Well, you know, there are some guidelines, but you can see. Be inspired guys, make it your own. Before we put it in the oven, we're just going to pierce it. Don't mind this, guys. That was um, the spatula. It wasn't that. It's nothing um, untoward. And then we're going to 
pour in our mixture. So you see how wet it is, guys? And that's the way it's supposed to be. Ooh, little chunks of chocolate down there. We gotta get them in. Chocolate and girl cake, could you imagine? It would never have been put in <laughs> back in the day. It would have been considered too expensive a commodity, I'm sure. Okay, so now I'm just going to spread that out. And I'm actually going to just put some little punctures in this before I lift it up. Because I think this is probably going to, yes, it's a challenge. Because the pastry is really soft. So I'm going to try and, oh, it's going to break on me, guys. That's such a shame. I should have put it back in the fridge. It's just so soft. Such a soft pastry. But anyway, not to worry. It's, as my mother used to say, it all goes down the same way. So, I'm going to oh, roll it over the top. I'm going to have to patch it just a little bit there. So remember guys, put it back in the fridge after you've sh shaped it because it's such a soft dough. But I don't think anybody will complain. Okay, now let's pop this in the oven. So we're gonna cook it. I, so I usually check it after an hour guys. So I'm gonna put it in the oven, check it after an hour and then give it another 15 minutes if it needs it. Okay, so there we go. It's out of the oven, guys. So I'm just gonna take it out of the pan to let it cool down. I should show you what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna take a plate and I'm gonna put it over the pan. And I'll wash it slide off. Actually, I'm gonna get two tea towels. And I'm going to, oops, turn it over. Mm. Now you can see the way it cooked up the side, so we're going to cut the edges off. Now I'm going to take my cutting board and I'm going to flip it back over. Okay, now, so it's still very hot guys, so I'm going to let it cool down. You can see it's still quite soft inside. I'm going to let it cool down and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to cut it for you. Okay guys, it's actually not really ready to cut but we're dying for a piece with a cup of tea so I am going to cut off the edges and let's hope for the best. It is still, you can see by the way it's still very soft. See it has, it, it needs a little bit of time to set but we are impatient. <laughs> it smells so good. Oh my goodness, that's so good. Oh my God, that's so good, guys. So you can see, I shouldn't be cutting this now. It's very hot. This is what happens to us. So I'm just gonna take some icing sugar. I'm gonna ice the top. Now, well, actually guys, I, when I added in the oven, when I thought you could actually um, what's the word I'm looking for? Glaze the top of it, not glaze the top of it. Brush the top of it with egg and milk if you wanted to, and I just forgot. That's ice and sugar. Guys, I can tell you, girl cake never tasted like this in the early 1900s. This is just a piece of heaven. It was piping hot and Kieran and I still ate it. I'm not sure if I showed you. Can you see how light and crumbly the pastry is? Heaven. The filling is just gorgeous. It's decadent almost, guys. Absolutely beautiful. Sorry now, I know the pastry fell apart, but I'm gonna show it to you there. It is absolutely gorgeous. Nicer than I remember. And, um, like I say, just threw all the bits in. If you want to follow the recipe exactly to how I did it, um, I, I'm telling you guys, it is absolutely delightful. There's no other word I can use for it. 
So now we are going to have another piece with a cup of tea. And I just wanted to say thank you again so much for all your support and for joining me today. If you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, that would be amazing. If you could subscribe to my channel, I would so appreciate it, guys. And thank you for having me back. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.